So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome back to the channel. The iPhone XS Max has been on the scene for over a year now and I did my year later video, I think about a month ago, but I wanna talk about it now that I've had the iPhone 11 Pro Max for a while now and kind of where this phone stands. Now, of course it's been discontinued by Apple, so what that means is if you go into an Apple store, you're not gonna find this one on the shelf, you're not gonna be able to buy this one in that store. However, it's very easy to now find this phone on discounts. I mean, somebody I think just commented a couple days ago, they found this phone for like 600 bucks. If you're watching this video, let us know again down below in the comments. Always appreciate you guys sharing your feedback and experience, so make sure you do that as well. Beginning with that, just the price of this phone. When this phone launched, it was well over $1,000, and now, to be able to find the 10s max at six seven you know sometimes eight but usually you can find them three to four hundred dollars maybe five hundred dollars less than what they started at this is a rock solid value now with what is still a very premium and gorgeous device here in the 10s max i mean it's basically the 11 pro max without the upgraded camera so you can see right there still stainless steel sides just absolutely stunning there. So really, I'm liking the 10s Max with this new discount quite a bit. Let me know what you think about an iPhone 10s Max at a lower price now. Okay guys, so body design, where does this 10s Max stand now? I just talked about how it's a good value for what you're getting a gorgeous device, but if we take a look at the 11 Pro Max, textured back and we also have that new camera, which is the real big difference because along the sides again, stainless steel buttons in the same place. Uh, pretty shiny there on the front. You wouldn't even be able to tell the difference forgot to turn that one on You wouldn't even be able to tell the difference here from the front of the max device And if you're not up close the thing about the iPhone 10 S max is it looks just like an iPhone 10 If you're not looking at it up close like you can very easily confuse this with the iPhone 10 If you know Apple, you know the gold was the 10 S but not everybody pays attention to stuff like that so Seeing this camera design makes this phone kind of look a little bit like a couple years ago. So yes, while it doesn't look dated or anything like that, still gives you a very premium feel, which means that if you bought this phone at a discounted price, you're likely gonna be very happy with what you're holding in your hand here. Very premium phone still. Not quite the new, new looking backside of the phone, but you put a case on it, you're covering the camera sometimes with your hand. Does it really matter? I'm not sure it does. One thing you will like though, is that the 10s Max does give you a lighter feel than that of the newer 11 Pro Max. So that's a good thing for you there. Still a heavy phone. It's not a light phone by no means, but it's still not as heavy as the 11 Pro Max. So that's a good thing right there. All buttons still feel very tactile. Never had any problems with these feeling cheap, anything like that. Nothing feels cheap about this phone. Very well put together device in the 10s Max. Okay, so where does the display stand here for the 10s Max now? So you can see, I got the dark mode on because I'm filming this at about 10 p.m. at night here, but if we go ahead and we change the brightness, very bright display, of course. True Tone does allow for nice calibration of color when changing between different ambient lighting conditions. Of course, night shift and dark mode. Now for the iPhone 11 Pro Max, because it's the new phone, that's why I keep Going back and talking about that one in this video, you can see also a very bright display, True Tone Night Shift Dark Mode. So yeah, you're getting basically the same features here. However, I will state that this is no longer the brightest iPhone out there. The newer one does get brighter, but this is still an extremely bright iPhone and I think it would hurt anybody's eyes to blast this thing at nighttime. Now when in sunlight, Never really had too much of an issue with the 10s Max when on auto brightness, it does a pretty good job of being able to see it. So while this doesn't hit the maximum 800 nits like before, 625 is where you're gonna tap out at, which nobody was complaining about on the 10R, and it doesn't seem like nobody's complaining about it on the 11. It's still top of the game. The 11 Pro Max just ups it a little bit, but not enough to be like this phone just has a bad display. This has a better display than even buying an iPhone 11, an iPhone 10R for example. So where do we stand now in terms of the software for this phone? Well, it's iOS, so you, you're gonna have you know great performance on this very optimized software. But the thing is, is that iOS 13 brings a dark mode as you see right here, which basically makes the applications a lot darker. Obviously, that's in the name. Um, that just makes everything easier to see at nighttime. And this phone is just a joy with the really dark you know, OLED display, it's absolutely phenomenal. Now, if you hold down the weather, you can see that you still have 3D touch. This is gone on the 11 Pro Max. I actually missed this 
um, on the iPhone XS Max. Very fast. To do that, you have shortcuts built in right here. You also have Find My, which combines two applications at once. There's better voice control features and uh, a lot of just different elements have changed, like the volume rockers. You're going to notice a different silent switch. There's hundreds, there's tons of changes here. Uh, overall, though, the core experience still remains pretty similar to iOS 12. Um, if you're an iOS lover, you're going to love 13 here on the XS Max. It still runs good. And for me, I haven't been seeing too much of a battery dip in this new software. So that's another good key factor to keep in mind. I want to make the performance section really short. It's been a few days since I've done a speed test with the 10s Max. So got to do some app updates, but A12 Bionic, I have this in my iPad Pro. I got this in the iPad mini, um, got this in the iPhone 10R. This processor is ridiculous. Like, do you need more than this? I mean, how many speed tests do we got to do to show you? It's untouchable. I mean, yeah, the Snapdragon 855 is doing very well against this processor, but you know, Apple does a really good job at keeping their hardware optimized. So really there's, it's just silky smooth. We do, we, I would like to see a ProMotion display on this iPhone going forward on, on newer iPhones, but it's still a silky smooth experience and uh, everything just flies. No matter what you're doing on this phone, you're going to be a very happy person when it comes to performance, especially if you're coming from anything prior to the Apple A11 chip, this thing just flies. So when it comes to storage, 256 gig model I went with here, as you can see, I didn't use most of the storage because I've been deleting a lot of these 4K videos I've been recording with this phone. I kind of get rid of them because I don't want to fill it up with just all this 4K content uh, in the phone. But if you do like to do stuff like that or just store a lot, you got big options here for 10s Max. You got up to 512 gigs. Now, mind you, every storage capacity you go with, even if you go on the used market or third party, each tier even a third party seller is going to sell for more. So of course it's more storage, basically more phone, more you can do with it with more storage. So talking about cameras, these dual 12 megapixel cameras were fantastic last year. And like I said, with the 10s, unless you're really going to use these cameras out, what's up guys. If you're really going to use this cameras out, um, unless you're really going to do that, it's really still. And even if you don't like use the camera that much, but you use it sometimes, 10s Max is still one of the best out there on a phone, still beating a lot of Android phones that competed with it. So this phone right here is fantastic. Now, if you really enjoy the wide angle, which you'll see a lot of YouTubers and, and a lot of like, tech journalists praising so much, but that's because a lot of them do take a lot of photos and videos. You got to think about yourself. Do you really think you're going to find that wide useful? If you do, I really do recommend taking a look at the 11 Pros, but if you don't need that, these cameras are phenomenal still here for the uh, 10s Max. I always like these cameras on this phone. And when I was going to use a phone to do videos or photos in like the past year, I was going to the 10s Max most of the time. So you can see right here, Smart HDR. And what that does is it basically takes a bunch of images, analyzes it and does some high dynamic range stuff, some magic. And it just makes the photo look better than what you can do just by taking a flat photo and probably trying to edit yourself unless you're really good. This is probably going to do a better job than you will do at setting the exposure and all that stuff on your own. So here's a few beautiful examples I have of the iPhone XS Max. I mean, just look at the detail. The detail is just there. I love it. You can see you can see the shadows and everything. Um, you can see right there. Tremendous detail. Nothing's like blurry, nothing like that. It's a good thing. Here's the front facing camera. I'm clear as day. I mean, sometimes I'm too clear. I don't want to see every pimple on my face, but yeah, I've got many pimples, but when I do get them, they're there. You can see right there, a little brain somebody drew on the ground, it looks like. Just incredible color reproduction, very natural. It's not so vibrant that, you know, it's like, you're like, why is it so oversaturated? And if we go here, you can see, look at the sky and the clouds in the background. I mean, it's able to get these clouds. So really the photo quality on this phone is just tremendous. Even though the 11 Pro Max is a little bit better, which is crazy to say, this phone right here is still not going to disappoint. The video looks amazing, especially in good light. Now, one thing I should mention is that if you do take photos in low light, this doesn't have the night mode, so you will get quite a bit of noise, but you just see the stuff is really crazy here, but you can see it's just really an amazing camera, even though it's last year's phone thumbs up for iPhone 10 S max still. So here we are with the 10 S from just a couple days ago. Extremely premium feeling phone, and 
this phone is 7.7 .7 millimeters thick, so not the thinnest. Phone. Yeah, so that was the smaller one we were talking about there, but you should have been able to hear the audio quality coming out of this large iPhone 10s Max. It's very good, so you're not going to have a problem there. They removed the headphone jack back in 2016, so I just want to mention that once again for people maybe who are on a way older iPhone, maybe SE, thinking about coming to this, maybe 6S, 6S Plus, maybe coming to this. You're not going to have the headphone jack if you're coming from those, but this phone right here, audio is superb. Bluetooth connections were blazing fast on this Bluetooth 5.0. Very quick stuff all around the board there, so really did like that, the audio quality for the iPhone XS Max. So on to my battery section of this phone. Now, this morning I woke up and I forgot to charge the XS Max thing was totally done. And it does take some time to charge if you use the included charger that comes in the box, it's pretty slow, you know, but the new phone gets a fast charger, this one doesn't. You're gonna have to buy a fast charger, which it does support if you want that. Now, this does also do wireless charging if you do have like a wireless charging pad like that one right there, although, I find that when I wireless charge too much, I lose battery capacity on my iPhone. So I don't typically do that that much, but if you want to do it, you can, it does support it. The battery life overall is good. 10S Max always got me through a day with relative ease, actually very good ease. Uh, it's pretty similar to like the iPhone 10R's battery life. I haven't seen too much difference there. Uh, maybe a little bit better on the 10R, but this phone always got me through most of the day without breaking a sweat. Pretty good screen on time. The new ones are crushing the 10s and 10s Max in battery, but it's not like, you know, if you're doing stuff throughout your day, you're not going to be able to finish it out on the 10s Max. It's a pretty long battery. I mean, unless you're playing Call of Duty all day or you're, you know, watching a Netflix movie three times in a row, you're Netflix binging on your phone. In that case, just plug it in while you're watching Netflix. Although, I do really, really enjoy the much better battery life on the new phones. Gotta admit that though. Okay, let me just be real with you here on the phone call qualities that annoyed me on this phone. And mostly because every time I was using this phone, not only the phone call quality, but like the LTE reception and stuff like that. No, it's just not there compared to the Samsungs right now. Even the new iPhone 11s aren't there compared to the Samsungs. I'm getting better LTE signal on the notes better phone call quality because the reception stays a little bit stronger so I don't get as many you know breakups or anything like that. I actually did have a couple drop calls on the 10s Max in my time using it so this has been pretty annoying to use as a phone. Don't let that dissuade you as me saying that this phone cannot make phone calls. It's a smartphone. It can definitely do that and if you're in a good area with good reception this is irrelevant information to you. It might work just fine. But for me, I'm just telling you my experience, it hasn't been the best on the market. So where do we stand with the 10s Max? So oh, it's a Bargain Hunters 11 Pro Max without that third camera. That's what this phone is now. I mean, it's funny to say that as this is the top of the game last year, but no longer. Now it's for the person who doesn't want to pay the premium this year, but still wants a great iPhone. Just go with this one. You'll be very happy, especially if you like the large iPhones and if you're like you know what finally I'm going to OLED and I want the big phone and I see those 10s Max on a great deal I don't need that wide angle I'm going with the 10s Max you're gonna be just fine with this one so let me know your thoughts now on the 10s Max I was very positive because I think it's a really good phone overall it's not perfect uh, but it is really well-rounded except for the phone call quality I was having issues with that um, it wasn't enough to make it a deal breaker though so yeah, let me know your thoughts on the 10s Max now. Are you going with one? Did you get one? Did you have one? You traded it off. You got your new phone. Let's hear it. Let us know. It helps people out who are in the comment section. You know what I mean? People are coming through these channels on YouTube and they see in the comments and they're like, and they come across a very helpful comment. That comment could be yours. And it's just always helpful if you could just leave a quick one. Anyway, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Nick here helping you to master your technology. I will see you all in the very next episode. Enjoy your Sunday and peace.